Flying Drones Over People, FAA Part 107, Rules in 2021. So this is a subpart D, Operations Over Human Beings. This subpart prescribes the eligibility and operating requirements for, remember, the civil and small unmanned aircraft to operate over human beings or over moving vehicles in the U.S. This is a gotcha question. So no person may operate a small unmanned aircraft over a human being unless that human being is directly participating in the operation of the small unmanned aircraft. B, that human being is located under a covered structure or inside a stationary vehicle that can provide reasonable protection from a falling small unmanned aircraft or the operation meets the requirements of at least one of the operational categories of subpart D of this part. So these are the categories, one, two, and three, and four. Category one. So category one is a small unmanned aircraft are permitted to operate over people provided the small unmanned aircraft weighs 0 0.55 pounds or less, including everything that is on board or otherwise attached to the aircraft at the time of takeoff and throughout the duration of each operation. Contains no exposed rotating parts that would cause lacerations. In addition for Category 1 operations, no remote pilot in command may operate a small unmanned aircraft in sustained flight over open air assemblies unless the operation is compliant with remote ID. Test questions are in green with those little cues on the end. Category 2. Category 2 and Category 3 provide performance-based eligibility and operating requirements when conducting operations over people using unmanned aircraft that weigh more than 0 0.55 pounds but do not have an quote-unquote airworthiness certificate under Part 21. Remember that. In addition, Category 2 operations no remote pick may operate a small unmanned aircraft in sustained flight over open air assemblies unless the operation is compliant with, again, the remote ID. So in Title 14 Aeronautics in Space, Part 107, there is a subpart D, Operations Over Human Beings. So for Category 2 operations, eligibility of small unmanned aircraft and other applicant requirements, there's A, to be eligible for use in Category 2 operations of small unmanned aircraft must be designed, produced, or modified such that it, one, will not cause injury to a human being that, if it's equivalent to or greater than the severity of injury caused by a transfer of 11 foot-pounds of kinetic injury upon impact from a rigid object, two, does not contain any exposed rotating parts that would lacerate human skin upon impact with a human being, and does not contain any safety defects, b, the applicant for a declaration of compliance for a small unmanned aircraft that is eligible for use in Category 2 operations in accordance with Paragraph A of this section must meet all the following requirements for applicants' unmanned aircraft to be used in Category 2 operations. So in 3.1, you have to display a label on the small unmanned aircraft indicating the eligibility to conduct Category 2 operations. This, and the label must be in English, it has to be legible, prominent, and it's got to be permanently affixed to the small aircraft. So you have to have a remote operating instructions that apply to the operation of small unmanned aircraft system. The applicant for a declaration of compliance must make available these instructions upon sale or transfer of the aircraft or use of the aircraft by someone other than the applicant who submitted a declaration of compliance pursuant to 107-160. Such instructions must address, at a minimum, you have to have a description of the aircraft um, as far as the system components, any system limitations, and the declared category or categories of operation, any modifications that were done to the aircraft, and you have to have instructions for how to verify and change the mode or configuration of the aircraft. You have to maintain a product support and notification process. The applicant for a declaration of compliance must maintain product support and notification procedures to notify the public and the FAA of any defect or condition that causes the small unmanned aircraft to no longer meet these requirements or any identified safety defect. So these were not on the test, just a FYI, that I remember. So category three, operations over people, category three, small UAS, 
have further operating restrictions. Remember that they're greater than 0.55 pounds and there is no airworthiness certificate. A remote pilot in command may not operate a small unmanned aircraft over open air assemblies of human beings. Additionally, a remote pilot in command may only operate a small unmanned aircraft over people if the operation is within or over a closed or restricted access site and all people on the site have to be notified that you're flying over them or the small unmanned aircraft does not maintain sustained flight over any person unless those people that are participating directly in the operation or they're located over a covered structure or inside a car. So category four operations is an addition from the NPRM. This category allows small unmanned aircraft issued an airworthy certificate under part 21 to operate over people so long as the operating limitations specified in the approved flight manual, remember that for the test, or as otherwise specified by the administrator do not prohibit operations over people. Additionally, no remote pilot in command may operate a small unmanned aircraft in sustained flight over open air assemblies unless the operation is compliant with the remote ID. And to preserve the continued airworthiness of the small unmanned aircraft and continue to meet a level of reliability, the FAA finds acceptable for operating over people in accordance with Category 14. There's additional requirements, information that you have to do. So here's a chart that I found off the FAA site. It is the operations of removing moving vehicles over or within closed restricted access site. The other one down below is operations over moving vehicles not over or within closed restricted access site. So this breaks it down really simple. Take a look at this. This is from the advisory circular from the U.S. Department of Transportation, and I will put a link in the description below so you can take a look at it.